Oh yeah, let's get into it. One of the big ideas that has plagued the Toronto Maple Leafs over the past few years has been their contracts. And quite frankly, the amount of money some of these top tier players on the Maple Leafs have been making or will be making in this entire decade's worth of NHL hockey we have seen. It all started with the Core Four, and everybody knows the story. Everybody knows about William Nylander, 2014 first-round pick, Mitch Marner, 2015 first-round pick, Austin Matthews, 2016 first overall pick, and then John Tavares, who had signed in free agency as well. Everybody knows that story. Everybody knows how we came to this point. The Toronto Maple Leafs have overpaid for a bunch of these guys, and now, when you think about what's next, whom it is that they need to re-sign still. They've already got Nylander and Matthews down long term, but what about Marner? What about Johnny T? Well, in this video, what I wanted to do was go over to an article on the LeafsNation.com written by John Seitzer that goes out there and tries to project what John Tavares' next contract would look like if he does sign with the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is your John Tavares contract talk update. So, I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go ahead and listen, or not listen to, if you wanted to read this article yourself, theleafsnation.com obviously is a pretty good place to get some Leafs conversation going. But when it comes to the idea of John Tavares and his contract, this is where you start to think about the possibilities of saving a little bit. Mostly because Johnny T has been making $11 million a year ever since he had signed his contract all the way back in 2018. This upcoming season, 24-25, will be the last year of his $11 million AAV deal, and if he were to sign an extension today, he could be going until... what? Seven years? 2032-ish? I mean, the guy's already 33, so he could maybe sign a contract till he's 40, but would the Toronto Maple Leafs want to go until that long? Probably not. He probably signs for a lot shorter, if that is the case. But the fact is, he is eligible for that extension now. He had 65 points in 80 games played last year, which is a little bit lower than the 80 points he had had in 80 games last season. He has been pretty much a consistent point-per-game guy until this most recently completed season, where he had 65. He kind of fell off, and he was a little bit slower, and now as he gets older, it's a very real conversation to have that John Tavares may be in his decline. But because he was making $11 million a year and he just had 60 points, you could very well say that the upcoming few seasons of John Tavares' hockey playing career could be seen with a much lower dollar amount. Plus, he already made his bag. I mean, he made $88 million over the span of this contract that he's currently on. Does he need any more? Who really knows? Let's go over onto the article published by John Seitzer here. The first thing is that John Tavares narrowly avoids the 35-plus contract restrictions in the NHL CBA. According to Cap Friendly, a contract is designated a 35-plus contract if the player's age on the first year of the contract is 35 or older as of June 30 prior to the year of the effective contract. That December birth date is doing a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to Tavares' next deal, which can allow for extra years as well as front-loading tomfoolery. Make no mistake, there should be tomfoolery and a ridiculous eight-year contract should be a part of the plan. Now, okay, what exactly is Seitzer referring to? Well, before getting into said tomfoolery, it is worth considering what is out there for comparable contracts to John Tavares. Right now, we'll assume that it's still about center comparables, but acknowledge the wing is potentially where he ends up as he'll accomplish more in a two-left wing role than a 3C one. The article then talks about a few of these names. Players in similar situations to John Tavares that are worth taking a look at are probably Evgeny Malkin, Anze Kopitar, and Ryan O'Reilly. The main theme here is that all three of them are on four-year or less deals. Kopitar signed a two-year, $7 million AAV contract, and rather than taking a haircut and anticipating a drop-off, he's being paid like the player he is today. That's certainly one approach. The Malkin contract had the bonus of Sidney Crosby applying pressure. It seemed that Malkin was headed for a Stamco situation and instead found himself on a four-year deal with a $6.1 million AAV. In addition to the Crosby influence, Malkin has not shown signs of needing to move from his second-line center role. Tavares has a few more questions in that regard. So, when you think about some of the extra names that are around the NHL and could be used to apply projections for what Johnny T could get, 
This is where Evolving Hockey comes in. According to them, John Tavares is predicted to signing a three-year deal at $7.14 million AAV, based on the current cap structure. I'm not sure how much an increase in the salary cap will influence John Tavares, but at $93 million on the salary cap, Tavares' deal would be at 7.5 mil. This contract would take John Tavares up to the age of 38, and as mentioned above, it is somewhat in line with what Kopitar and Malkin got. I'm not sure that Toronto does this. And so now we get into the numbers, because if it is John Tavares at a three, four year deal at 7.2 or 7.4 or 7.5 million dollar AAV salary, honestly, I'm still kind of feeling that that's a bit much. I get it, you know. The Toronto Maple Leafs have a different standard when it comes to their guys being available to sign big money deals and to demand big money, period. It's a different standard over there. Everything changed with Kyle Dubas and the We Can and We Will situation. But thinking about it now, I mean, all these other guys that signed deals that were around the same or maybe a little bit less AAV-wise, I mean, Kopitar or Tavares in 2024-2025, I'd rather go Johnny T. Tavares or Ryan O'Reilly? Maybe last year I would have said Tavares, but I don't know about now. You think about the other contracts over here of Guinea Malkin. Yeah, no, I'm going Malkin, 100%. It's not even just strictly about points. It's about mobility. It's about translatability. It's into projectability. There are a lot of things that bring themselves up when you talk about what contracts should be worth in 2024 for guys that are already past 33 years old. I mean, John Tavares certainly is not a bad hockey player, but is he $7 million AAV good? I get you could say that the cap is going up and that when it comes to 2030 or whatever, like these contract amounts probably won't really mean much. But at some point, you have to acknowledge that what's in front of you right now is still important to think about, too. And my question is really, where does the line get drawn when you consider how far you'll go with these contract amounts? So if you're a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the idea of a 7.8? something, let's say under 7.5, but maybe above 7.1, million dollar AAV contract extension for John Tavares. Three years long, four years long, if you go even further, maybe you could get that dollar amount reduced a little bit. But of course, the con of that is that you'd need to wait until John Tavares' contract next time expires, and if he's not great by the time 20... 26 rolls around, for example, you could be really eating the bag on what could be a John Tavares overpay of a contract. There's loyalty there, of course. I mean, the guy was a hometown Leaf and he wanted to be a Maple Leaf. Maybe he's interested in the idea of helping them out from beyond the ice and just the contract numbers as well. That would be a true leader move to pull something like that off, right? Sign, let's say, a three-year, $5 million deal. Like, he goes way under his market value, and he says, yes, yeah, screw it, I want to win with Toronto. This is what needed to be done from the get-go. This is the standard that needed to be set. Not this 11, 10.9, $13 million crap that everybody's going through now because Toronto Maple Leafs can ask for that amount of money ever since I started. And I get it, you could say that it's not fair to blame Tavares in that respect because the San Jose Sharks in 2018 were offering him a 13 plus million dollar AAV contract to go to San Jose, and he said no to that. But either way, now in 2024, we are still talking about John Tavares this time in an extension conversation that is a lot less expensive. But I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comments section either way. How do you feel about a seven point something million dollar deal for Johnny T? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If it's not this amount of money, if it's not this term, what exactly is it that you would feel comfortable with instead? And what is the repercussion? for that. Where do the Toronto Maple Leafs get this extra money from? What do they end up sacrificing by going this far? And what do you think they could do if Tavares just went cheaper? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Astros 99. And bye.